Uh, uh, well, not a lot to say, really, uh, other than our effort was incredible. Um, I'd feel bad for our guys. They wanted to win so badly, but uh, incredible effort uh, against a really good team. You know, they, uh, they're the conference champs. You don't accidentally fall into that status. Um, but I, I thought we had some chances. I thought, I thought it wasn't for lack of effort. That was for sure. Uh, we, we, we played really, really hard. We wanted to win badly. Um, it just, it wasn't our day in some ways. And then we compounded that with a couple of things. I think we'll look back and there'll be, you know, four or five things that we, we had a lot of control over that, that, you know, the play didn't turn out our way and it yielded points for them because of something that we could have controlled. But they have a good team. They have a, an experienced team, vets, tough, you know, prolific scorer, at least one. I don't want to. I don't want to minimize anyone else's contributions on their side of the ball, but at least one prolific scorer. And, um, you know, it just was, uh, it's hard. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to just wrap your mind around when you got the guys in the, in the locker room that are hurting like that. But, you know, sun will come up tomorrow and uh, we got a lot that we're still playing for. There's still more milestones that are out there for us. A lot of them are already in the rear view mirror. Um, and I just, I joked around with him. I said, the SEC just wasn't quite ready for us to, to do all that and end up being first place in the, in the league. So um, we'll have to settle for something else. But it was, uh, it was a great effort by our guys and their guys too. It was a good basketball game and just, uh, just came up short. Lamont, it seemed like you guys were really making a conscious effort to run them off the three-point line, which kind of got them going on the inside. Just what did you see defensively that was kind of helping their inside game early? Um, yeah, well, I mean, they're a good team. They're going to get some things done. Here's a, when I look back at it. Here's what I here's what I'll look at. I'll really try to get to the bottom of some transition situations. Why did those happen? I know they got some stuff in transition. I don't know how many points, but. In the first half, they had some transition stuff. What was the root of that? Could we have controlled some of that? My guess is that we could have. Um, I'll look at some of our uh, defensive responsibilities and just a couple rules. And, and, and I know we violated some rules defensively. Um, a co I mean, I think, it, I think ultimately for me, it boils down to that. I, I, try, I really want to look at the things that we could have controlled were there enough of those that could have impacted the game? And I think without a, a doubt, the answer is yes. Um, they got some stuff inside. They're aggressive. They, were, they ducked in in there. Um, they got some threes also. They, they, they have a good team. But I mean, all said and done, overall from a defensive standpoint, the body of it, you know, we talked about it before. Dalton Connect had, what was it, 25, 26 points on how many field goal attempts? On 23. Yeah, I can't control who shoots on there, and but that's a that's a number that I like, honestly. And someone's going to write, ah, oh, Donald Connect had 23 as they win the conference championship. But honestly, those numbers are probably where I want a prolific scorer to be. 20, 25, six shots on points on 23 shots. So, it just was some other stuff. Honestly, it came down to some other stuff, um, and some of it was. We were excited, and maybe that made it a little harder for us to 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 stick to the script on a couple of defensive things. You want to make a play, and honestly, sometimes the play is kind of hidden out there, and it's just being solid is the play. But you know, guys want to make a play. They want to get a steal. They want to block a shot. They want to they want to make a spectacular play, and I think that led to a couple of things where where you know, generally we've been a little more solid than that. Coach, you talk a lot about this team's makeup when we talk about the success it's had. But what about this team's makeup is going to help it uh, move on from a loss like this? Yeah, it'll be a hard night for them, I imagine. I mean, we'll come in and we'll have to do some damage control tomorrow at practice, just emotionally. It's, you know, 
Hey, trust me, people know. They, these guys know. There's no, there aren't any secrets as to who picked who, where, and all this and that and the other. And so, I mean, they've, they've owned that and they've worn that badge all season. They've continued to perform on a consistent basis, a consistent basis. Um, and so they expected to win today. So they're going to take this is going to be a hard loss for them. Um, and so, uh, but so we'll do some damage control tomorrow with the guys and, and um, just getting back to we'll, have, we'll spend a full day just of doing our stuff and, and, and all that. But the, we, it's an un, it's unbelievable, unbelievable character that this team has. I'm, I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. I've done this for a long time. And I've had some really good ones. I've had some. I've been a part of some teams where it's like, wow, man, if we could ever get close to that, that would be awesome. Forget about making shots, and and we've 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 gone beyond that. In in most cases, it's an unbelievable. It's an unbelievable group. I can't say that enough. But because of that, it does make it a little. We'll move forward. You know, we'll move forward. We move forward after the LSU game. That was a hard one. Right, particularly with the way it ended, and you think about the ramifications of that when you're in a race like this. Um, we moved forward from that, and we put three games together at that point. So we'll move forward. They're young, they're resilient, um, and so we'll get back to it and uh, um, and just prepare for for what's next for us. Coach, a lot of Tennessee's three pointers that they hit tonight came a lot of on a lot of off ball stuff, especially like on stagger screens. Uh, what's the the challenge of trying to stop them when they have guys that move so well without the ball? And what's something you think you guys could have done differently to maybe discourage some of those catch and shoots? Yeah, um, that's a good one. I'll have to look at it and see. You know, we've played other teams that uh, that have played like that, um, like them. Uh, we played them before. And they didn't have near as many of those, right? They just didn't. Um, so I think I think our determination in some of the chasing, you know, there was one time in particular, one I thought one guy was a little fatigued, and I maybe should have pulled him out of there. He was playing pretty well. That I, I, I could have gotten him out of there maybe a couple minutes before that play happened. But hindsight's always twenty twenty on that. Um, but um, I'll have to look at it and see what the real root of it was you know there were some times where the first screen in a, in a stagger was a was a guard to guard and we could have switched some of those we've talked about doing that um we don't switch a lot of things but that's one scenario that we will switch from time to time so but w without really seeing it i need to lay my eyes and get what the root problem of was for that but um i know a couple times it was we didn't chase just the quality of our chase just was not great um I know that, and so when I see that in the game, I try not to overreact to that, but it's, I'm going to re react to that because all I see is a, a seven-foot gap between the shooter and the chaser, and there's, I need to see why that happened. I mean, I'll get into the lab and figure out why that happened. Coach, Rick Barnes mentioned earlier that they made it a point to not switch as much when they were on the defensive end tonight like they did in Knoxville. How do you think that sort of affected the guys on offense? Um, yeah, they, did, they didn't switch quite as much, and they, were, and they crowded the paint. Um, you know, I generally like it more when guys don't switch as much, typically. But they're hard-nosed. They, they have hard-nosed defenders. And so here's, here's what I thought impacted us. We would, when we would try to come off of a screen, there would be contact. And so that discouraged us, probably both as a screener and a cutter, but it discouraged us from coming off the screen the way that we needed to come off the screen. And so, and that's not to insinuate that, there were, that those were fouls, okay? I don't want anybody to twist my words. Uh, just based on what you might feel about the fouls in that game. But I, it did discourage us, and we're, we're not easily discouraged. Typically, we're not easily discouraged. And we were when it came to that. So I was a little disappointed in that. Um, but they're good at it. They muscle you off of stuff. They do what people call blow-up handoffs, you know. They blew up the handoff, and Miles got the offensive foul. Uh, uh, you know, a multitude of times they did that. And so they're good. They're good defensively. I know I'm stating the obvious, but uh, teams don't typically score in the 80s and 90s against 
against that team. And so we had some struggles. But also some of it we didn't shoot. We did not shoot the ball great. And we had some, we had some stuff that I thought was good. I mean, we, got it, we did some – we had some stuff in transition where we moved the ball ahead and we got an open shot and then we just didn't make it. So overall, I, I thought what we did offensively was you know, probably good enough. Could have been better, but I thought it was probably good enough. To see the emotions these guys have after a game like this and, you know, just a season like this, what is that showing you about what's being built here at South Carolina? Yeah, I think it's, <clears throat> I think it's, you're in it every single day. So it's, you get, it's hard to just get an evaluation from, from further away from it, from a mile away. And, um, but these guys want to win. They they care a lot. They care a lot about each other. Um, they wanted to play really well for the seniors. Also, um, it's building is exactly what's happening here. That was my mission when I came here was to build, and not to sprinkle some sort of magic fairy dust over the top of this whole thing and make it instantly good. And then who knows what next year will look like. And it was to build. And I don't know if anyone talked about. A lot of the analogies that I made last year had to do with building a house and that when you're building a house and you're building the house to live in that house and you want it to be a really solid house, your foundation is up to code. Your insul ins insulation is the thickness that it's supposed to be. That's when you're building it to live in it. When you're building it to sell it, all it's got to do is look good. Uh, no one cares what if it's, if it's warm in there in the wintertime or not. You've sold it already. And so building has been my whole part of my process since I've been here. Um, and we're still building. We're still building. And, but it's nice to see that, you know, at some point when you look at the thing and the drywall's hung and you could say, oh, that looks like a bedroom. I see how, where that's going. Um, and then one day there's paint on the walls and it's still not all the way there, but it looks like a house. Uh, and you already know that behind the drywall is the proper amount of insulation. You already know that under the floor is the exact type of foundation that you want to have. You already know all that stuff, even though at this point you can't even see that. So we're building. We will continue to build, but I like where we're at. Um, it's solidly built. What we have right now, it's solidly built. And that was a, that's a humongous success especially in 2024 where we're trying to microwave everything that we can microwave. Um, and so I take a lot of pride in the fact that we have selected the right people as, as those foundational pieces and that it's coming to fruition um, and, and there, there's some results. And, you know, I think everybody now can see it kind of sort of looks like a house. You mentioned how much your guys wanted to win, uh, but this whole season you guys have played incredible while being counted out. Is there any part of you as a motivator that is excited about the opportunity over the next two weeks to prepare your guys for you know two tournaments? Yeah, I mean, again, in, in, in there, there are still so many milestones in building. You know, I don't know when the last time we got a Mike, – Michael debates might know – the last time we got the double bye. Okay. Okay. Great. And then before that, I wonder what it was. So I, my only point is that's it's hard to do. A lot of teams don't get it. I know as, as I look back in the history, we haven't gotten it a lot. And so there's a there's something to play for that you want to achieve. It's a big achievement. It helps your chances to win uh, the conference tournament. Another achievement um, if you can get that done. So um, there. So many things that are that are out there for. So you ask what if there's a part of me. I mean, all of me, all of me is excited about that. Every last drop. And so um, there's so many things that are experiences that these guys are going to always remember. They're always going to remember one. I think just what this team was about and how they feel about the guys that were in the locker room. They're never going to forget that. I know that for a fact. Um, but then there's all these other things, the ability to play in the NCAA tournament. And so to have a role to help provide that for, you know, not only our fans and our community and our alums and all the former players, all that stuff, but to, for the guys that are in the locker room, man, how, what, a, what a rewarding, what a motivating factor um, 
to do, you know, some of the things that aren't the most glamorous thing in this job, but you do it for the guys and you and and then to see how they react emotionally and want to win so badly. Um, you know, it's a special it doesn't always come together that way. I'm telling you, it just it, it, it doesn't. <coughs> this was the third game in a row. You had kind of an extended stretch without without a field goal late in the first half. Is there any trends you're seeing with those three stretches or anything you're kind of seeing maybe why the offense is maybe spiraling a little bit in some situations? I don't know. We scored 51 points in one game. And I, we figured it all out, I guess, in that game. I don't know. It's basketball. It's basketball. Stuff happens. Yeah, I'm watching their game, and and they're talking about that too. This team, this is a good team. People think they're a one seed and and whatever, and um, <clears throat> and they went, you know, three and a half or four minutes in the in the most recent game that I watched. I can't remember which one it was, but um, it's basketball, and then you got to push some buttons and make some substitutions and get a guy to play better or make a different play call. Maybe sometimes it comes down to that. Rarely. But it's basketball. You have to weather a storm. You got to do what you can do to minimize what that storm looks like on either side. And then when it's all said and done and the dust settles, hopefully you've done enough to put yourself in a chance to, or in position to win the game. So I don't, at this point, I'm not going to, I don't micromanage. We know who we are. We know how we play. We know what that looks like. We do some things better than others on, on, on certain days. And so we'll, we'll take a look at the film and try to see what it was. But we also were playing against a team that is really, 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 really good defensively. They're really good defensively. And we had some good shots that we missed. That's how it goes, you know? That's when in the NBA, they always say it's a make or miss league. I mean, I think it is anywhere. But in that league, for sure it is. You play the same game and shoot higher percentages. I mean, you think about this game. We went five for 10 from the free throw line. Something that simple. You go 10 for 10 from the free throw line, not some sort of monumental achievement, something that's impossible to do. You go 10 for 10, it's a completely different complexion of the game down the stretch, right? On, only going 10 for 10, and we're probably not talking about that anymore. So it's what it is. And we didn't play great that way. We didn't perform, we didn't perform incredibly well in terms of uh, making some shots actually go in. But our effort was certainly there. And... Um, Proud of the guys, and you know, like I said, we'll have to lick our wounds, get back into the lab, and and luckily we play here in a couple of days. John, back. Yeah, what was the most important part in getting that 14 point deficit down to three? What what was kind of, kind of key for that? And then in those moments late late in the game, when you're calling those timeouts and stopping the game and talking to your guys, is it? Can you take in a big picture in those small picture moments, or are you just? simply focused on on what's happening right then and there um uh yeah what was the first part of the question again sorry i was oh yeah yeah yeah. okay um sorry um i thought i thought a key in a stretch we did step on the gas pedal a little bit more we needed to i mean we played with a smaller lineup generally a smaller lineup i think even at one point we had colin at the five i don't know that there was that that uh specifically coincided with that run but my guess my gut feeling right now is without looking at it that that was happening during that time we we were playing a little smaller and we had <clears throat> we spread the floor out and got going we felt like we at some point we needed to we needed to we needed to expedite the whole coming back process the slow grind wasn't wasn't just happening that way and so I thought that was a big key. We got some stuff in transition. Michi had his foot on the gas. He got in the paint some, got fouled a couple times. We kicked out and got some stuff to happen. Um, we got a couple turnovers here or there. I thought that was – I thought there were some good things that were happening that allowed us to, to really – and we were getting some stops at the same time, so that allowed us to shrink the, shrink the lead. But uh, um, we just couldn't – we couldn't see it get to level. And once you do that, sometimes if you're a resilient, tough group, once you see it get back to even, you just, there's no looking back. And we just we couldn't, our eyeballs couldn't let it, we couldn't get that visual. Mark in the back, left, last question. Lamont, you talked a little bit about the seniors yesterday, but coming off an 11 win season a year ago, to sell your vision to guys like Talon and BJ, for them to buy in the way they have, what has that meant to you and how have they? Started to build the foundation of what you guys are building here. Yeah, it's, it was. It's. Uh, it's been a great. Hopefully, I mean, from <clears throat> from my perspective, 
it's been a great one year for those guys. Um, just opportunities that they've had, uh, relationships that they've developed, and you know bonds that they'll have for a long, long time. Um, uh, but you're, when you're trying to sell what it's going to look like, there's some challenges with that. You know, at the end of the day, I think the ultimate the ultimate factor that makes that a reality is that they believe in their family and their group believes in me and my staff. Um, I think that's the key to the whole thing. Um, in conjunction with their opportunity, they believe that the opportunity you have for them aligns with the opportunity that they're seeking. Um, and you get a couple guys like that and and it's amazing what can happen. But those guys were ex the exact right guys. We got the exact right guys that we needed to help to help establish what our culture is. And like culture is a buzzword. Everybody always says it, right? Who's going to not say culture as a coach? But I, I we have to have it. It's the it's we if we don't have the culture exactly how we like it, it's hard. It's hard to win, you know. Um, but those are the exact right pieces that we need to needed to help not only establish it that started last year, right? We made some GM moves from a personnel standpoint. We added those guys to it. We kept some guys that also were really about what we wanted to be about. And it all came together for a grand slam. I mean, in the world of culture, it was a Bottom of the ninth World Series, bases loaded. I don't know, and it might have been it might have been a full count just for a little extra drama. Um, and it was a grand slam what we hit with with our culture. So hopefully that's clear as day as to how I feel about these guys, who they are, what they're about, and it's a it, it could literally not have happened any better that way for for me and for what we want to get done thanks thanks